Hey, my name is Mike, and in this video, I'll be showing you one of my favorite functions in all of Excel. So out of using Excel for many years as an engineer, one of the most common functions that I've used and one of the most powerful ones is VLOOKUP. And this is a function that can drastically change the way you do your job, whether you are in human resources or engineering or uh, product management, whatever it might be, pretty much anyone who uses Excel, and if you deal with tables, you're probably going to benefit from this video. And I would venture as far as to say, it could even change your career. This could save you a lot of time and make you a lot more productive, which first of all, makes your job way easier. And second of all, makes your output way higher, which means your manager likes you, you're more likely to get promoted, you get higher pay. Overall, you are a more effective worker by just knowing this simple function in Excel. So like I said, in this video, I'll dive into what VLOOKUP is, how you can use it, and different examples to really help you understand what this function actually can do. In addition to that, I'm gonna show you a bonus, which is HLOOKUP, which is a slight variation of VLOOKUP. So let's head over to my laptop. As you can see right here, I have a table, and this table, let's just say we are a produce market, just for the sake of example, and we've got our inventory, we've got our cost, we've got our prices, our profits, and let's just say we want to know, we want to look up the price of a specific thing. So this is where you'd actually use VLOOKUP. Instead of going through here and saying, all right, where's oregano, scanning, finding oregano, then looking over and saying, oh, there it is, $5.99, there's a function that can find that for you. So in this case, we go over to price, and let's just say equals VLOOKUP, VLOOKUP, you can see right there it is a function, so we'll say open parenthesis, and now it recommends four different arguments. Now, you really only need three of them, the fourth one in brackets is optional, and the, the three that we have here, uh, the first one is the lookup value. So the way VLOOKUP works is it is a vertical lookup, that's what V stands for, and later I'll show you HLOOKUP, which is horizontal lookup, but vertical lookup essentially scans a table down vertically, so it'll look for the lookup value. So if we want to find oregano, oregano is our lookup value, meaning we tell it to scan down the first column of this table until it finds oregano and then go over a certain number of columns and return that value. So our lookup value is oregano, that's what we're looking for. Then we'll say comma and it asks for what table array, essentially what table is it going to be searching. So we can go and click and highlight this entire table and I'll explain a little bit more about tables in a second and why I like to use tables. So I'll select all of that, I'll say comma, and now it wants to know the column index number. So out of all these columns, which one is it going to be returning? Once it goes down, once it finds oregano, we have the first column, second, third, fourth, the fifth column is the one we want, because we want the price. So we're gonna say five uh, to return the fifth column, and then after that, it wants to know uh, right here, is it true or false? It's just a Boolean statement. And this is going to be, is it exact match or the nearest match? So right now we want exact match. If it doesn't say oregano, don't give us the price of something that's close to oregano. So we are going to say false, false. And I'll show you an example of where you'd wanna say true later on in the video. But if we have that right there, so let's check it. So we have VLOOKUP, we're looking for oregano. In this table, uh, we're looking for the fifth column, which is going to be our price and we want an exact match. So if I hit enter, it should tell us $5.99. Right there you can see $5.99. Now this is a function, so whatever we change in this cell, the item right here, it'll actually look that up. So we could say dill, and it says $5.49, which over there we can check and verify $5.49 is correct. Again, we could try that one more and say carrot, carrot, and there we go, we have that as well. Now if we type in something wrong, so if we say maybe organic carrot, and that doesn't exist, it'll say NA. And that's not always the best output right there. Sometimes you want something that looks a little bit nicer, or maybe you want it to just say, we don't have that product. So in that case, we wanna add a little bit extra onto here. We wanna say, if there's an error, which that is right there, an error, we want it to print something else. So if we go in the beginning of this, right after the equal sign, we can say if error, if error, and then open parenthesis. So this is the value. There we're gonna say comma, and that's saying if this, if this function right here, if the VLOOKUP returns an error, instead do this. So instead we're going to say um, item does not exist. And we'll put that in quotes. It's important that you put it in quotes so that Excel knows it is a, a string, a text that it's going to output. We can close the parenthesis, hit enter, and now when we type in something that doesn't exist, it'll produce that. But if we go back and type in regular caret, 
it'll tell us what the price actually is. So you can see right there, you built a really functional cell that is searching this entire table and is very interactive. Now let's go to another uh, example over here because maybe you don't wanna just search one thing at a time. Maybe instead you want to use it to populate an entire table. So here we can say maybe somebody's buying a couple items. Let's just say they're buying a carrot, or they're buying some, I don't know, let's just say one of each. We'll say dill, uh, they're going to buy beets, and they're going to buy ginger. And let's just, let's just assume they're buying one unit of each of these. Uh, you could use multiple units, uh, and I can easily show you how to do that as well. But for the sake of example, let's keep it very simple right here. Let's actually add one more as well. So let's say cabbage, cabbage. And so what you want to do, there's a couple of reasons I want to show you this. First of all, because I want to kind of take a step back. We saw what VLOOKUP did, but let's talk about how you can actually use it yourself. There are a couple things that you need to do as general housekeeping items. The first one is that it does make it so much easier if instead of using just a whole bunch of cells like this, you convert it into a table. So you can hit Control T or Command T if you're using a Mac, um, and that will convert the whole thing into a table. You can see right here, create table. Uh, and now we have the entire area selected. We have this little checkbox because we do have headers on the top and I can say, okay. Now the benefit of making a table here is that if we go and add more items below, so we add some other item, another item there, the table will continue. And anytime we're doing our lookup, it'll look up everything in the entire table rather than just looking at the selected cells. So let's go and undo those. I don't want those extra two rows there. And now we wanna look up the price of each of these. So we're gonna say equals V lookup, V lookup in parentheses. And you could probably guess what we're going to do here. The lookup value is to the left, that is carrot. And then we have the table array. We're going to select the entire table. And you can see right there, the way it types that out is table six all. So it's looking for through the entire table. And even if we add more lines in the table or more rows in the table, it is going to continue searching the entire table, including those new rows. So now the column index, we want the price of this. And again, that is going to be the fifth column. And then of course we want this to be false. We have to type in false there. And now let's hit enter. So we have the price of carrots. We can go down, we can actually just click and drag this down from the little box right there down to cabbage and it'll find everything in there. And you can see cabbage, I actually didn't mean to do that, but very useful here. We can see cabbage, I obviously added an extra B in there and it didn't return the price. If we fix that, it will return the price and we can easily use this to make a receipt. So if we say equals that times zero point, let's just say our, our tax is 0 0.06 and we are going to double click this time and that'll drag it all the way down. Actually, we didn't wanna drag it all the way down though. Let's drag it down just to here. Now we can add our subtotals and say equals sum, open parenthesis, select this range, close parenthesis, equals, and it's going to do it here and we're gonna copy that over there and this is also going to be summing. So now the overall total, we can say equals sum of these two cells here and that's going to be the total price if somebody ordered all of those things. Now, two very important notes with VLOOKUP. The first one is that it only ever searches the very first column of the selected range for the value you told it to look for. So in this case, if you select this entire table and you say look up carrot or dill or beets, it's going to search the very first column. Now, if instead we said, let's just cut this. I wanna show you right here as an example. If we moved these over to here, and now we still did the same thing, it can't find it because it's searching the first column for carrots and carrot doesn't exist there. Now, if we undo it, of course, it goes back to working just fine. Now, the second important note is that if you have duplicates, this is searching in order. So it's gonna go down line by line in order. And if you have carrot in here twice, it's only going to find the first version of carrot. So if we just type in carrot down here and we have uh, the price, is, let's just say the price is like 24 or $34, it's not going to show $34 there because it's listed up here and that's the one it's going to select. Now, if we go up to carrot and delete this, now it's going to find the next one in that list. So that's a really important thing to note. If you have duplicates, always make sure everything is singular. Um, and if you have duplicates, go in there and change the name of one of them at a time, if that's what you need to do, or there are different functions we can talk about. Now let's take it a step further. Let's say you have a really large data set and you wanna store that in a completely different sheet on Excel. This is going to be how you'd use VLOOKUP. So if we just have right here, one sheet is going to be a nice clean printout of the receipt. And then our other sheet, say over here, for example, has all of the products and all of the prices. The way we would do this, let's just say we have, I don't know, let's copy the same, the same product. So we're gonna say the same produce right here is being purchased. Uh, those are the ones we have. And I really don't want these to be copied with the boxes. So I'll just do a little format right here 
and I'll click and drag that down so they're all formatted the same. And now for the price of each of them, let's say equals, and I think you guys know exactly what we're gonna do. VLOOKUP, we're gonna look up carrot, say comma. Now we're gonna look it up in the table, uh, the table over here, so we can click back to this sheet, select the entire table, just like that, say comma. So go up here, we're gonna click on that and say comma. And now we want column number five, so five, and then false close parenthesis, hit enter, and there we go. It's now searching a table on a different sheet altogether, and we can drag that down and see, just like that, it's going to be working just fine. Now let's talk about VLOOKUP nearest match. Remember before I said that we wanted to have false at the end to find exact matches only? Well, there are examples of when you'd want to have the nearest match. For example, if you have a fundraiser, and based on how much, uh, how many sales people make, they can get specific prizes. I think we can, we've all experienced something like this back in like elementary school. And so here we can see a bunch of students, what they sold, like what their sale value was, and then we need to figure out what prizes they are going to get based on this little award chart here. So this right here is saying if they sold more than $20, they get a sticker. If they sold more than $50, they get a goldfish. And so these are kind of like check marks where once you get above a certain threshold, you get that prize. So what we wanna do here is actually look up the sales value that they made and find the nearest value rounding down. So $14, you look at this and say, all right, well, the, the nearest number under $14 is zero. The nearest one under $506 is $500. Now, you wouldn't want to round these up, so if it's like, uh, if, if you see something that's like $15, well, even though that's closer to 20, you still need to round down and say zero because they didn't reach that threshold. So, let's say equals VLOOKUP, VLOOKUP, and here we're going to be looking up the sales, not the name, we're looking up the sales to see what number in this column, that, remember the first column here is sales, uh, is going to be closest to this. So we're gonna go and select this entire table, we're going to say comma, and now what it's going to return, the column index, we wanna know what prize they're going to get, which is column number two. So first column is sales, second one is prize, and now we're going to say at the end, we can either leave it blank, which will automatically do this, or we can type in, really best practice is to type in true. I'm gonna hit enter, and it'll tell you $14 correlates to zero, they get a high five, that makes sense. Now, if we double click this right here, if we go and double click the little corner, it'll populate the entire space, and now we can see and verify, okay, $506 is closest to 500, they get a free pizza. Someone else gets some headphones because they're over $2,000, and this works really, really well. So far, I've been showing you VLOOKUP within a table, but sometimes a table's not an option, whether there's just too much data or Excel slows down or whatever your reason is, you can still do this with an array, but it's going to be slightly different. So here if we say VLOOKUP, VLOOKUP, uh, and then we do the same thing, so we're searching for this, comma, we're searching this array here, comma, and then we can say we want the second column, and we can say true, true for the nearest value, close it, and it is working just fine. But the problem is if we drag this down, it's going to be searching different arrays. So if we click down here, and if we click on that, you can see that it's not the table that we want to search. So what we have to do, let's delete all of these, let's delete all of these, go to the top one, and we're gonna add dollar signs to say exactly this grid. We want A3 to B11, no matter where we drag this formula. So we can put a dollar sign before the A, and before the three, and then before the B, and before the 11, and now it should work as we drag it down, it'll work exactly the same everywhere, and if we click on this, it's still searching just that little grid there. So that array is equivalent to a table as far as this is concerned, but the difference here that I said before with tables is that if we add a new line, if we add something below here, so if we add, for example, like 2,500, or if we say 2,100, and we say, um, like, whatever, headphones, then it's not going to show that up here, even though that would make sense. If it was a table, it would be showing up there. It's not doing that because this is not going to adapt. Instead, it just has a specific range that it is searching for. So that's the reason I really said using a table is better, but you don't have to. Now, let's go to the next one. The last example I have is actually HLOOKUP. Now, HLOOKUP, as you might expect, instead of VLOOKUP for vertical lookup, HLOOKUP is horizontal lookup. So instead of having everything in a vertical table, so it's gonna search horizontally through sales going across, and then once you find the sale that makes sense, it's gonna go and return lava lamp or whatever is right below that. So the way we do this is down here, we can say equals HLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, and then in parentheses, the lookup value, again, is the sales. We can say comma, and we are searching this grid right here. We could say comma, and now we want the second row. Here we're talking about rows instead of columns. And then we can say true at the end, 
hit enter. And again, remember how this is not a table up here. So instead, we want to add some dollar signs. We're going to add a dollar sign there. Uh, and then of course, here as well. And now if we say enter, we can double click the little corner when you get that little black plus mark, and that will fill the entire thing. And you can see that again, we have everything looking exactly as it should. All right, so that's everything I have to show you about VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. There is also a third one called XLOOKUP, but that one deserves a video in itself. So I'll link that right up here as soon as I make that video. It is an incredibly powerful function, and I'm excited to share that one in that future video. If you have any other functions that you really like or want me to talk about, be sure to leave them in a comment down below. Uh, Excel, there really is so much to talk about with Excel, and we'll be making many more videos just like this one. So if you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing. I'm Michael Bryan. I'll see you next time.